This is the Plaza Theatre Podcast. Act 5. Scene 1. Pinchwife's Lodging. That evening. Enter Mr Pinchwife and Mrs Pinchwife. A table and a lit candle. Come, take the pen and make an end of the letter just as you intended. If you're false in a tittle, I shall soon perceive it and punish you with this as you deserve. Lays his hand on his sword. Write what was to follow. Let's see. You must make haste and help me away before tomorrow, or else I shall be forever out of your reach, for I can defer no longer our... What follows our? Must all out then, bud. Look you there, then. Mrs Pinchwife takes the pen and writes. Let's see. For I can defer no longer our wedding. Your slighted... Alithia? What, what's the meaning of this? My sister's name to it? I, I am stunned. My, my head turns round. Speak! She'll be angry with me, but I had rather she should be angry with me than you, bud. And to tell you the truth, t'was she made me write the letter and taught me what I should write. Oh, I thought the style was somewhat better. But how could she come to you to teach you since I had locked you up alone? Oh, through the keyhole, bud. But why should she make you write a letter for her to him, since she can write herself? Why, she said, because... Because what? Because? Because, lest Mr Horner should be cruel and refuse her, she might disown it, the hand not being hers. How's this? Ha! This changeling could not invent this lie, but why should she... Now I think on it, Horner said he was sorry she had married Sparkish, and her disowning her marriage to me makes me think she has evaded it for Horner's sake. But hark you, madam, your sister went out in the morning, and I have not seen her within since. Alack a day, she has been crying all day above, it seems, in a corner. Where is she? Let me speak with her. Oh, Lord, then he'll discover all. Pray, hold, bud. Do you mean to discover me? She'll know I have told you then. Pray, but let me talk with her first. I must speak with her to know whether Horner ever made her any promise, and whether she be married to Sparkish or no. Pray, dear Bud, don't till I have spoken with her and told her that I have told you all, for she'll kill me else. Go then and bid her come to me. Yes, yes, Bud. Let me see. I'll go. But she is not within to come to him. I have just got time to know of Lucy, her maid, what lie I shall tell next, for I am at my wit's end. Exit Mrs Pinchwife. Well, I resolve it. Horner shall have her. I'd rather give him my sister than lend him my wife, and such an alliance will prevent his pretensions to my wife, sure. I'll make him kin to her, and then he won't care for her. Mrs Pinchwife returns. Oh, Lord, Bud, I told you what anger you would make me with my sister. Well, won't she come hither? No, no, alack a day. Uh, she's ashamed to look you in the face. And she says if you go into her, she'll run away downstairs and shamefully go herself to Mr Horner, who has promised her marriage, she says. And she will have no other, so she won't. Did she so? Promise her marriage? Then she shall have no other. Go tell her so, and if she will come and discourse with me a little concerning the means, I will about it immediately. Go! Exit Mrs Pinchwife. Hmm. His estate is equal to Sparkish's, and his extraction is much better than his, but my chief reason is I'd rather be of kin to him by the name of brother-in-law than that of cuckold. Enter Mrs Pinchwife. Well, what says she now? Why, she says she would only have you lead her to Horner's lodging, with whom she first will discourse the matter before she talk with you, 
which yet she cannot do, for, alack, poor creature, she says she can't so much as lick you in the face. Therefore, she'll come to you in a mask, and you must excuse her if she make you no answer to any question of yours till you have brought her to Mr. Horner. And if you will not question her, she'll come out to you immediately. Let her come. I will not speak a word to her, nor require a word from her. Oh, I forgot. Uh, besides, she says, she cannot look you in the face through a mask. Therefore, would desire you to put out the candle. I agree to all. Let her make haste. Mrs Pinchwife puts out the candle and exits. There, tis out. My case is something better. I'd rather fight with Horner for not lying with my sister than for lying with my wife. And of the two, I'd rather find my sister too forward than my wife. I expected no other from her free education, as she calls it, and her passion for the town. Well, wife and sister are names which make us expect love and duty, pleasure and comfort, but we find them plagues and torments, and are equally troublesome to their keeper. For we have as much ado to get people to lie with our sisters as to keep them from lying with our wives. Enter Mrs Pinchwife, masked and in hoods and scarves and a nightgown and petticoat of Alethea's in the dark. What, are you come, sister? Uh, let us go then. Uh, but first let me lock up my wife. Mrs Marjorie, where are you? Here, bud. Come hither that I may lock you up. Get you in. Locks the door. Come, sister, where are you now? Mrs Pinchwife gives him her hand, but when he lets her go, she steals softly on the other side of him and is led away by him for his sister, Alethea. Act 5, Scene 2. Horner's lodging. Later that evening. Quack and Horner revealed. What, all alone? Not so much as one of your cuckolds here, nor one of their wives. They used to take their turns with you, as if they were to watch you. A pox! Keeping a cuckold company after you have had his wife is as tiresome as the company of a country squire to a witty fellow of the town when he has got all his money. But what becomes of that intrigue with Pinchwife's wife? Did she not send you a letter by him? Yes, but that's a riddle I have not yet solved. What, here's the man we are talking of, I think. Mr Pinchwife and a lady. Mrs Pinchwife is masked, muffled, and in her sister's gown. What means this? The last time, you know, sir, I brought you a love letter. Now you see a mistress. I think you'll say I'm a civil man to you. I know thou art an honest fellow and hast a great acquaintance among the ladies. Make her showman. Art thou sure I don't know her? I'm sure you do know her. A pox, why dost thou bring her to me, then? Because she's a relation of mine. Is she, man? Ah, then thou art still more civil and obliging, dear rogue. You'll make her welcome for my sake, I hope. I hope she is handsome enough to make herself welcome. Oh, do you speak to her? She would never be ruled by me. Uh, madam... Mrs Pinchwife whispers to Horner. She says she must speak with me in private. Withdraw, prithee. She's unwilling, it seems, I should know all her undecent conduct in this business. Well then, I'll leave you together and hope when I'm gone you'll agree. If not, you and I shan't agree, sir. If she and I agree, it is no matter what you and I do. <laughs> whispers to Mrs Pinchwife, who makes signs with her hand for him to be gone. In the meantime, I'll fetch a parson and find out Sparkish and disabuse him. You would have me fetch a parson, would you not? Well then, now I think I am rid of her and shall have no more trouble with her. Exit Pinchwife. Enter Servant. Sir Jasper's fidget, sir, is coming up. A pox on him. Has he not enough to do to hinder his wife's sport, but he must other women's too? Step in here, madame. Exit Mrs Pinchwife. 
Enter Sir Jasper. Boy exits. My best and dearest friend. Aside to Quack. The old style, Doctor. Well, be short, for I am busy. What would your impertinent wife have now? Uh, Well, guest in faith, uh, for I do come from her. To invite me to supper. Tell her I can't come. Go. Nay, my lady, and the whole knot of the virtuous gang, as they call themselves, are resolved upon a frolic of coming to you tonight. I shan't be at home. Lord, how churlish he is to women. Nay, prithee, don't disappoint them. They'll think tis my fault. Prithee, don't. But make no noise on it, for the poor virtuous worms would not have it known for the world that they come to no man's ball but yours. Well, well, get you gone, and tell them if they come, twill be at the peril of their honour and yours. <laughs> we'll trust you for that. Farewell. Exit, Sir Jasper. Doctor, anon you two shall be my guest. But now, I'm going to a private feast. Horner and Quack, exit. Act 5, Scene 3. An exterior setting. Later that evening. Enter Sparkish, Pinchwife. Sparkish with the letter in his hand. But who would have thought a woman could have been false to me by the world? You are a frank person, and so is she, you see there. Nay, if this be her hand, for I never saw it. It is no matter whether that be her hand or no. I am sure this hand, at her desire, led her to Mr. Horner, with whom I left her just now to go fetch a parson to them to deprive you of her forever. For it seems yours was but a mock marriage. Indeed, she would needs have it that Tos Harcourt himself in a parson's habit that married us. But I'm sure he told me it was his brother Ned. Oh, there it is out. And you were deceived, not she. But I must be gone. Uh, You'll find her at Mr. Horner's. Go and believe your eyes. Exit Mr. Pinchwife. Nay, I'll to her and call her as many crocodiles, sirens, harpies and other heathenish names as a poet would do a mistress who had refused to hear his suit. But stay, is that not she following a torch at the other end of the piazza? And from Horner's, certainly it is so. Enter Alethea and Lucy, behind with a torch. You are well met, madam. What, you have made a short visit to Mr Horner? Hmm? But I suppose you'll return to him presently. By that time, the parson can be with him. Mr Horner and the parson, sir. Oh, come, madam. No more dissembling. No more jilting. How's this? So, twill work, I see. Could you find no easy country fool to abuse? None but me, a gentleman of wit and pleasure. But it was your pride to be too hard for a man of parts, unworthy false woman. False as dice. Who undo those that trust all they have to them? Oh, you've been too merry, sir. At your wedding dinner, for sure. Have you the confidence to stand my just reproaches? You did not write an impudent letter to Mr Horner, who I find now has clubbed with you in deluding me with his aversion for women, that I might not suspect him for my rival. Do you think the gentleman can be jealous now, madam? I write a letter to Mr Horner. Nay, madam, do not deny it. Your brother showed it to me just now and told me likewise he left you at Horner's lodgings to fetch a parson to marry you to him. (laughs) And I wish you joy, madam. Joy, joy. And to him, much joy. And to myself, more joy for not marrying you. (laughs) I see this gentleman can be made jealous. Oh, Lucy, by his rude usage and jealousy, he makes me almost afraid I am married to him. Art thou sure it was Harcourt himself, and no parson that married us? I suppose that was a contrivance, too, of Mr Horner's and yours, to make Harcourt play the parson. For shall I tell you another truth? I never had any passion for you. 
Till now. For now. I hate you. It is true. I might have married your portion, as other men of parts of the town do sometimes. And so, your servant. And to show my unconcernedness, <laughs> I'll come to your wedding and resign you with as much joy as I would a stale wench to a new cully. <laughs> there for you. And so your servant <laughs> Exit Sparkish. How was I deceived in a man? You'll believe then a fool may be made jealous now. But marry Mr Horner? My brother does not intend it, sure. If I thought he did, I would take thy advice and Mr Harcourt for my husband. Away, impertinent. Yes, madam. And here I hope we shall find Mr Harcourt. Exeunt Alicia Lucy. You're listening to the Plaza Theatre Podcast. Please consider making a donation to keep theatre alive in Romsey. Visit plazatheatre.com for more details. Act 5. Scene 4. Horner's Lodging. Later that night. Horner, Lady Fidget. Mrs. Dainty Fidget and Mrs. Squeamish are revealed at a table banquet. Bottles abound. The ladies are singing. A pox, they are come too soon, before I have sent back my new mistress. <laughs> that we may be sure of our welcome, we have brought our entertainment with us and are resolved to treat thee, dear Toad. And that we may be merry have left Sir Jasper and old Lady Squeamish quarrelling at home. Therefore, let us make use of our time, lest they should chance to interrupt us. First, that you may be private, let me lock this door and I'll wait upon you presently. Now, ladies, supposing we had drank, each of us, our two bottles, let us speak the truth of our hearts. Agreed. Lovely Brimmer. Let me enjoy him first. I never part with a gallant till I've tried him. Dear Brimmer, that makest our husband short-sighted. And our bashful gallant's bold. And for want of a gallant, the butler lovely in our eyes. Drink, eunuch. Drink, thou representative of a husband. Damn a husband. And the filthy toads choose mistresses now as they do stuffs for having been fancied and worn by others. Whilst women of quality, like the richest stuffs, lie untumbled and unasked for. Let me tell you, sir, there is nowhere more freedom than in our houses. And we take freedom from a young person as a sign of good breeding. And a person may be as free as he pleases with us, as frolic and gamesome, as wild as he will. Haven't I heard you all declaim against wild men? Yes, but for all that, we think wildness in a man a desirable quality. A tame man, foe. I know not, but your reputations frightened me as much as your faces invited me. Our reputation? Lord! Why should you not think that we women make use of our reputation as you men of yours? only to deceive the world with less suspicion. And that demureness, coyness and modesty that you see in our faces in the boxes at plays is as much a sign of a kind woman as a vizard masked in the pit. For I assure you, women are least masked when they have the velvet vizard on. You would have found us modest women in our denials only. I beg your pardon, ladies. I was deceived in you devilishly. But why that mighty pretense to honour? We have told you. T'was for the same reason you men pretend business often to avoid ill company, to enjoy the better and more privately 
those you love. But why would you never give a friend a wink, then? Oh, faith, your reputation frightened us as much as ours did you. You were so notoriously lewd. <laughs> and you so seemingly honest. Was that all that deterred you? And so expensive. I was afraid of losing my money as well as my time, both which my other pleasures required. Money, foe! You talk like a little fellow now. Do such as we expect money? Such as we make sale of our hearts? We bribed for our love? Foe! With your pardon, ladies, we must let you win at cards or we lose your hearts. And if you make an assignation, tis at a goldsmith's, jeweller's, or china house. Would you not have us assured of our gallant's love? For love is better known by liberality than by jealousy. Come, here's to our gallants in waiting, whom we must name, and I'll begin. This is my false robe. Claps him on the back. How? Did you not tell me twas for my sake only you reported yourself no man? Oh, wretch, did you not swear to me twas for my love and honour you passed for that thing you do? So, so. Ladies, this is my false villain. And mine too. And mine. Well then, you are all three my false rogues too, and there's an end on it. Well then, there's no remedy, Sister Sharers. Let us not fall out, but have a care of our honour. Come, faith, madam, let us pardon one another. For all the difference I find betwixt we men and you women, we forswear ourselves at the beginning of an amour, you as long as it lasts. Sir Jasper Fidget, an old lady squeamish, sir. Oh, my lady Fidget, what is your cunning to come to Mr Horner without me? But you have been nowhere else, I hope. No, Sir Jasper. And you came straight hither, Biddy? Yes, indeed, Lady Grandmother. Tis well, tis well. I knew when once they were thoroughly acquainted with poor Horner, they'd never be from him, and, and I warrant her reputation safe. Oh, sir, here's a gentleman come whom you bid me not suffer to come up without giving you notice, with a lady and another gentleman. Uh, do you all go in there while I send them away? And, boy, do you desire them to stay below till I come, which shall be immediately. Exeunt Sir Jasper, Lady Fidget, Old Lady Squeamish, Mistress Dainty, Squeamish. Yes, sir. Exit Servant. Exit Horner at the other door and returns with Mistress Pinchwife. Pray, my dearest, be persuaded to go home and leave the rest to my management. I'll let you down the back way. I don't know the way home, so I don't. My man shall wait upon you. What? Are you weary of me already? No, my life, tis that I may love you long. Tis to secure my love and your reputation with your husband. He'll never receive you again, else. What care I? I don't intend to go to him again. You shall be my husband now. Uh, I cannot be your husband, dearest, since you are married to him. Oh, would you make me believe that? Don't I see every day at London here women leave their first husband and go and live with other men as their wives? Pish, sure. You'd make me angry, but that I love you so mainly. Oh, in again, in, I hear them. Mistress Pinchwife behind the screen. Well, a silly mistress betrays her husband first to her gallant, and then her gallant to her husband. Enter Pinchwife, Alethea, Harcourt, Sparkish, Lucy. Come, madam, tis not the confidence of your asseverations, and your false witness there shall persuade me I did not bring you hither just now. Here's my witness, who cannot deny it, since you must be confronted. Mr Horner, did I not bring this lady to you just now? Now I must wrong one woman for another's sake. Pray, speak, sir. What? You are studying an evasion or excuse for her. She bids you speak. I pray, sir, do pray satisfy him. Then truly you did bring that lady to me just now. Aha! Uh how, -huh. sir? Uh, how, Horner? What mean you, sir? I always took you for a man of honour. So... If I had had her, she'd have made me believe the moon had been made of Christmas pie. 
Now could I speak, if I durst, and solve the riddle? Who am the author of it? You share in my disgrace, sir, and it is your censor which I must now suffer that troubles me, not theirs. Madam, then have no trouble. You shall now see it is possible for me to love without being jealous. I will not only believe your innocence myself, but make all the world believe it. Horner, I must now be concerned for this lady's honour. And I must be concerned for a lady's honour too. I understand you not. I would not have you. Mr Pinchwife, peeping from behind the screen. What's the matter with them all? Come, come, Mr Horner, no more disputing. I have a parson below. I brought him not in vain. No, sir. I'll employ him, if this lady please. How? What do you mean? Aye, what do you mean? Why, I have resigned your sister to him. He has my consent. But he has not mine, sir. A woman's injured honour can be repaired or satisfied by any but him that first wronged it. And you shall marry her presently. Or... Lays his hand on his sword. Enter to them, Mistress Pinchwife. Oh, Lord, they'll kill poor Mr Horner. Besides, he shall not marry her while I stand by and look on. I'll not lose my second husband so. She comes out to them. What do I see? My sister in my clothes. Ha! Ah! Nay, pray now, don't quarrel about finding work for the parson. To Mr Pinchwife. He shall marry me to Mr Horner. For now, I believe you have enough of me. Pray, sister, pardon me for telling so many lies of you. I suppose the riddle is plain now. No, that must be my work. Good sir, hear me. Kneels to Mr Pinchwife, who stands doggedly with his hat over his eyes. I will never hear woman again, but make them all silent thus. Offers to draw upon his wife. No, that must not be. Well, you then shall go first. Tis all one to me. Hold. Enter Sir Jasper Fidget, Lady Fidget, Old Lady Squeamish, Mrs Dainty Fidget, Mrs Squeamish. What's the matter? What's the matter? Uh, pray, what's the matter, sir? I, I beseech you, communicate, sir. Why, my wife has communicated, sir, as your wife may have done too, sir, if she knows him, sir. Sure, with him. <laughs> Do you mock me, sir? A cuckold is a kind of a wild beast. Have a care, sir. Uh, no, sure, you mock me, sir. He cuckold you. He can't be. <laughs> Why, I'll tell you, sir. Offers to whisper. I tell you again, he has whored my wife and yours too, if he knows her, and all the women he comes near. Tis not his dissembling, his hypocrisy can wheedle me. How does he dissemble? Is he a hypocrite? Nay, then, how, wife, sister, is he a hypocrite? A hypocrite? A dissembler? Speak, young harlotry. Speak how? Speak, good order. Art thou a dissembler, a rogue? Hast thou... So. Aside to Horner. I'll fetch you off, and her too, if she will but hold her tongue. Canst thou? I'll give thee... To Mr Pinchwife. Pray, have but patience to hear me, sir. Who am the f unfortunate cause of all this confusion? Your wife is innocent... I only culpable, for I put upon telling you all these lies concerning my mistress in order to break off the match between Mr. Sparkish and her, to make way for Mr. Harcourt. Did you so, eternal rotten tooth? Then it seems my mistress was not false to me. I was only deceived by you, brother, that should have been. Now, man, to bring your wife to her lover. Ha <laughs> ha! I assure you, sir, she came not to Mr. Horner out of love, for she loves him no more. Hold! I told lies for you, but you shall tell none for me, for I do love Mr. Horner with all my soul, and nobody shall say me nay. Pray, don't you go to make poor Mr. Horner believe to the contrary. Tis spitefully done of you, I'm sure. Peace, dear idiot. Mr. Dorilan and a quack, sir! Horner, your servant. I am the doctor's guest. He must excuse our intrusion. But what's the matter, gentlemen? For heaven's sake, what's the matter? Oh, tis well you are come. Tis a censorious world we live in. You may have brought me a reprieve, or else I had died for a crime I never committed. 
and these innocent ladies had suffered with me. Therefore, pray satisfy these worthy, honourable, jealous gentlemen that... Oh, I understand you. Is that all? <laughs> Sir Jasper, by heavens and upon the word of a physician... Whispers to Sir Jasper. Sir. Uh, nay, I do believe you truly. Uh, pardon me, my virtuous lady and dear of honour. What? Then all's right again? Aye, aye, aye. And now let us satisfy him too. They whisper with Mr Pinchwife. A eunuch? Pray, no fooling with me. I'll bring half the chirurgeons in town to swear it. They? They'll swear a man that bled to death through his wounds died of an apoplexy. Pray hear me, sir. Why, all the town has heard the report of him. But does all the town believe it? Pray inquire a little, and first of all these. I'm sure when I left the town, he was the lewdest fellow in it. I tell you, sir, he has been in France since. Pray... Ask your friend, Mr. Dorilant. Gentlemen and ladies, haven't you all heard the late, sad report of poor Mr. Horner? Aye! 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 Aye. Aye. Why, thou jealous fool, dost thou doubt it? He's an errant French capon. Tis false, sir. You shall not disparage poor Mr. Horner, for to my certain knowledge... Oh, hold! Stop her mouth! Do you think we would have been seen in his company? Trust our unspotted reputations with him? Well, if this were true, but my wife... Dorolent whispers with Mrs. Pinchwife. Come, your wife is yet innocent, you see, but have a care of too strong an imagination. There's doctrine for all husbands, Mr. Harcourt. I'm impatient till I am one. And I, by example, will never be one. And because I will not disparage my parts, I'll never be one. And I, alas, can't be one. <laughs> but I must be one against my will to a country wife. And I must be a country wife still, for I can't, like a city one, be rid of my musty husband and do what I list. Now, sir, I must pronounce your wife innocent, although I am the only man by her now exposed to shame, which I will straight drown in wine as you shall your suspicion, and the lady's troubles will divert with a dance. Indeed she's innocent, sir. I am a witness, and her coming out was but to see her sister's wedding. And what she has said to your face of her love to Mr. Horner was but the usual innocent revenge on a husband's jealousy. Was it not, madam? Speak. Aside to Lucy and Horner. Since you'll have me tell more lies. Yes, indeed, bud. For my own sake, fain, I would all believe. Cuckolds, like lovers, should themselves deceive. But his honour is least safe, too late, I find, who trusts it with a foolish wife or friend. A dance of cuckolds. Now, you, the vigorous, who daily hear over the visit mask in public domineer, nay, have the confidence to cry, come out. <laughs> Yet, when she says, lead on, you are not stout. In fine, you essenced boys, both old and young, who would be thought so eager, brisk and strong, yet do the ladies not their husbands wrong, whose purses for your manhood make excuse, and keep your Flanders mares for show, not use. But, gallants, have a care, faith what you do, the world which to no man his due will give, you by experience know you can deceive. And men may still believe you vigorous, but then we women, <clears throat> there's no cousining us. Finney. Thank you for listening to the Plaza Theatre podcast. Although the theatre is closed, keeping the building maintained still costs money. If you've enjoyed our podcast today, please consider making a donation to keep theatre alive in Romsey. Visit plazatheatre.com for more details. <laughs>